Chair, we're going to call to order the uh, regular Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, November 8th, 2021. And we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Public speak. Uh, we'll start with Diane Grenier. I'm all set, thank you. Okay. Uh, Diane Choquette. I am all set. Okay. Kathy and Mike Palazzi. We are all set. Thank you. All right. Good to hear from you. Thanks. Kimberly Persson. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Jeff Murray has joined us, so we're all here. Um, home to, I can't read that, 20, home tool 20. Would you like to participate in public speak? Okay, since that's a no, we're gonna move on to additions and deletions to the agenda. Do we have any additions to the agenda? So Aaron? I'm gonna suggest we add item G um, and I would call that the Clarko Field Evaluation Services. So, new business, 10, 10 G, what do you want to do with this? Uh, just uh, Mr. Clarko Field Evaluation Services. Isn't that 10D, the Veterans Memorial Field Funding and Agreement? What is that? Uh, no. Okay. No. Um, well, it could be. Why don't we just add it to that, Eric? Okay, that's fine too. 10D, we'll call it uh, triple I. Okay, I can't even spell. There we go. Okay, um, somebody's gonna have to make that motion, but is anybody else? Adrian, do you have anything you wanna add? I do not. Uh, Paula? Okay, Scott? I'm fine. Jeff Murray? He's probably driving, we don't wanna sit there and cause a crash. So if he's not going to add anything, I think uh, I, I talked to him. I talked to him. He didn't have anything. All right. So I'll make a motion that we add to uh, 10D item three, uh, Calarco Field Maintenance Agreement. All right. Who wants to second that? Second. All right. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. All those who abstain? So Mr. Murray abstained, so it passes. All right, uh, we're gonna move on to item four, the finance director presentation on new financial software. Sherry Holmes, the uh, town treasurer has joined us. Hi, Sherry. Hi, good evening. Um, Edmonds, new financial software system. I feel it's going well. We are um, fully up and running at this point. The last bit of training happened today with the bank statements. It's still going to continue. Um, we got a little bit of overview of what the bank reconciliation looks like and what it, how it is functioning. So I feel we're going to need a little bit more uh, training on that as we go through it. But as far as the cash receipts go, we're entering uh, cash receipts, deposits, and cash disbursements. We're processing checks, which I will um, email you uh, October's uh, check register so you can see um, 
the checks that were processed during month of October. The journal entries are being made, uh, reconciliations between the town and the Board of Ed will be in place. Um, that's working quite well. Um, let's see, payroll is just uh, from Pine Pay. We do a journal entry that that seems to be going well as, you know, everything like I am happy with it at this point. Um, every software system that you use financially has some bugs to work out. And in my mind, where that is, is in the reporting right now. So I am working with the programmers to see if the reports can be produced a little bit better with the columns that um, I think should be there, especially the percentage column, which they can't seem to figure that out, but it is coming, I'm told, in an update uh, during the month of December. So that should be okay in place. Um, there is capability to export the financial statements to Excel. So conceivably, I could do that and add that final column uh, percentages so that you know you can have that for your monthly um, financial statement. The revenue uh, report um, needs a little work. Um, as far as the balance goes, uh, I want it to read as the previous revenue report, which is um, you have the amount that you budgeted or you anticipate getting, and then you have the amount that is received. And I like to, it to say balance yet to be received so that you know, you know, we got in X, we need to uh, receive Y. Um, so I'm working with them on that. The, uh, the only other piece is um, like major for me is the financial statements. Um, I just get a little frustrated sometimes because I think as programmers, they can go behind the scenes and, and fix things easy enough, but I get, oh, that's in the next update. So I'll keep uh, continuing to working with them. Um, the good news is the auditor likes the uh, report as far as the detailed transaction. Um, general ledger, it gives a lot of detail for him to pull um, invoices and, you know, um, payroll, journal entries, that kind of thing. So um, he's pleased with that, which is always a good thing when the auditor likes your software, financial software. Um, I don't know what more you want me to present, but I think in eight months time, it's up and running. Um, and we are working with it. It's a, as far as level of security, there are some um, things that we have to do extra over and above what we had to do in Phoenix, but that's to be expected. And as um, one get used to that, they'll be fine. Can you tell us, I mean, I know it's in the packet, but can you just kind of, because I'm not sure exactly how up to date everything is. I know where we're running over on a couple of items. Are we, are we running over so much at this point that we're outside of contingency or are we still covered with contingency where we're at right now? We're still covered with contingency right now. There's, a few, things, there's a few things I have to take a look at and see where we're going to get the money, but um is there anything specific? Um, not, not at this time. I'm not prepared to present something like that right now. Okay. Um, because I have to take a look of, at all departments. Uh, one thing that um, comes to mind is in the um, tax collector, uh, Department where the quality data services software is a little higher than what was anticipated uh, budgeted. The assessor um, has the same software uh, data, quality data services, 
and um, it was appropriately budgeted at that amount. So we're we're good there, but I just have to cover the uh, tax department and find the money for that. Is that one contract or two separate contracts? Two yeah, separate, wait, one go, assessor. Go and back one to that. Go tax back. Collector. So are you telling us that the quality data service information that the tax collector has shows a higher tax collection number than the assessor's office? Shows a higher cost. Higher what? A higher cost. It's a cost, higher cost for software services. For the software services, yeah. And it could be that we just didn't anticipate the right number. I'm not sure. That's why I need to take a look at that. I need to call quality and see if there's anything that can be done. Um, and if it's the correct number, they are two different separate bills. One's assessor and one's tax collector. So um, that I'm going to have to research and I don't really have the answer right now as far as it, um, that goes, but I will work with them to see if there's any kind of um, relief uh, credit or so forth. I, I, think, I think my concerns were generally with all the payroll stuff because we've had so much shifting in different departments where we're at, if, if we're running behind or if we're okay there. And then um, obviously public works um, where we're sitting, you know, uh, in public works yeah. right now, so. All right, well, those are the two focus uh, that I would certainly um, pay attention to and get okay. you that amount. If, that. if you can get us something maybe before the next meeting in the interim, you know, a couple of weeks out, that might be helpful. Couple of weeks out, so when's the next meeting? Well, we're every month, so yeah. Every month, okay. All right. It, it would help if you I'll put could... my list on it. Um, put uh, that on my list. Excuse me. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure you got a long list. We're not trying to dump on you. It's just um, we're going into budgeting season, and if we're already seeing something that we're off on now, we want mm -hmm. to certainly be aware of that as we start right. talking about department that, budgets being put together. And that so. one area may be one of those areas where we have to budget a little higher for. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, um, uh, it is November and I realize a new software and I realize reporting has been uh, difficult to, to get to, but um, we as a board have seen very little. Um, we need to start seeing it. I don't care if it's outside of the software. Um, the check registers were helpful to allow us to understand the total amount of transactions that, that might go through the department on the town level. Um, okay. I, I would ask you from a standpoint of payroll. So, uh, you know, when we do payroll, just so everybody understands here and, and is dealing with this, um, we pay a payroll service to calculate on the payroll. What we're doing internally is making sure the hours are effectively put, uh, uh, moved to the payroll service. Is that accurate? Right. Yes, we make sure that the amount of hours are inputted into the system. I'm paying their correct, the rates and so forth. Um, and make sure that people who are getting paid are salary people versus hourly people. Okay, and then just for the next step is prime pay still processing individual checks for some of the um, some of the payroll withholdings? Very, uh, yes. Um, no, direct deposit, I'm sorry. Well, I, I realized we were trying to get everybody to direct deposit and, yes. and after some of the old time um, employees have, have actually gotten um, direct deposit, which is great. Uh, what I'm asking is, is, is the payroll transaction a lump sum transaction one amount of money that hits the bank account or do you have multiple transactions so all of the gross like i know prime pay is paying the federal taxes but they used to cut mm -hmm. individual checks for things such as the pension or some of the union dues are you still having them cut checks or are they still are is prime pay handling all of those transactions 
they are handling all of the transactions to my knowledge. So you're telling me that we have one big lump pulled from our bank account every every two weeks. It's a total amount for the payroll every total two weeks. Right. And you make it a you're making a journal entry into the system to account for that payroll for that two-week period. Yes, correct. Okay. Including all the deductions. <laughs> okay. That was it. I wanted to know if Prime Pay, I mean, I just wanted everybody to understand we use payroll service. And I wanted everybody to understand that it's a, it should be a one, one amount of money broken down into various uh, categories to make the journal entry. So all the, payroll, all the payroll goes to the wages for the various departments and yep. you know, our- what, What's our-, our what, We get a payroll journal report, which is- it t gives us all that information on that payroll journal report. That's the report we use to generate the journal entry and make sure that things are balanced and, and right, correct as they should be. Um, and that's, that's a very detailed document, so. Okay. Um, I do have uh, so two questions. Um, do we know if, um, I, I'd asked this a couple times back, and, and so I, I just wanted to make sure I, I, I didn't miss the answer, um, or if Eric knows. Do we have a way with Prime, with, with our current time clock system, to punch on and off different jobs? Like, and, and I guess this comes up because we just went through this with COVID, right? So people had all this stuff that they had to do that was maybe COVID related. How do we separate those hours? But also with public works, we had a, a bridge that we repaired. Did we, were we able to punch on and off that bridge work so that if we did have the ability to apply for, for, for monies during a disaster or something that we can actually show what we spent to do the repairs, whether it's tree work or, or bridge work or whatever, how are we punching on and off jobs? Is there a way to do that with the payroll service? And if, if we don't know if we can get that answer. The answer is no, we can't do that within prime pay. Um, you know, if you want to look at that, you're looking at a solution like Workday or, I mean, there's a bunch of providers that do that. Um, my last two jobs, we did that with, um, but, you know, we don't have that ability right here, right now with Prime Pay. Is it something that we know if Prime Pay offers as well or no? Because um, the time clocks, the time clocks are currently Prime Pay, right? Right. They didn't you know, four or five months ago. I mean, you've asked me this question a couple of times before. Yeah, I, mean, I, I haven't, haven't gotten, I haven't gotten in the last couple of months, but as I far as I know, no. I've that asked it. He's not within prime pay. I've asked it. I hadn't get, gotten a definitive answer. I've gotten, I don't think so. I'm not sure. You know, I wasn't something we discussed when it was put sure. in. So I just want to sure. know definitively. Sherry, can you find out that answer and get it to Adrian before the next meeting? Sure, I'll have to call them and shouldn't be hard. So I'm sure it's not hard. It's just no, it's not, you know it's just gonna be, let's get the time answer. to do it and you I know. Understand. let's let's get them the answer. So okay. thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All Sorry, right. I, and forgot, then, I forgot the other question, so we're good. Sherry, <laughs> and then um uh the the reporting um even if you don't have the system set up to post the uh the, the revenues. I would like some type of report next month that shows us what our collections have been in group terms. Like how much money did we get from grants? How much money did we sit there and get from tax collections? Some way to at least allow us to understand um, the inflow because, you know, you know, without a balance sheet, uh, without some type of report to show us where our cash is and where we're at, uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, that's why we were moving up to a different software. I would like some some additional reporting, and I don't need it to be perfect, Sherry. But what I need it to be is incremental. You need to sit there and give it, give us pieces and say this is where we're at today. This is step. This is where we've been at. This is where we're moving to, and then we'll at least have information that we can sit there and ask. Uh, better questions of you in future meetings. All right. So okay. thank you for all your hard work. I greatly appreciate it. And if anybody I, else on this board has some questions, let's go. I remember my other question. What's our total employees on the town side and on the, that we're writing checks for to prime, you know, we have to do balancing with, 
How many on the town side and how many on the school side? I have to, I don't know off the top of my head how many employees. Okay. I, I just sat today with Marina and we went over payroll for the town side. Next week, I'll be going over payroll for the Board of Ed side. In total, I don't, I'd have to count them up and give you a total. So are we basically- do that, it's just not well, readily available now. You said you, you went over you went over payroll with her this, this morning or did it take all day? I'm, I'm trying to get an idea of how much time it actually takes us to do payroll, you know? In the morning. It took in the morning. To, to do this, the, the yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And would you say it's about the same for the school or a little more? Yeah, about the same. Okay. Yep. It's I mean, your, your better question, Adrian, to move for that is, can you tell us how many hourly employees there are at both locations? Just so we get an understanding of what's up because- Hourly if, versus salary. That was correct. Right. So split it, split it down because the salary, Adrian, should be nothing. It's just a- it's just a, a, a standard amount of money. It gets processed every week. It, right. You know, right. Um, pretty much all the same. Well, the I, employees. I was certain thinking, times of the month that we have to take certain deductions out, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. You know, um, insurance uh, being one. Um, so, yeah, I, I can certainly do that. Yeah, so if, do, the more information we get, the better we'll all be. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Paula, any questions? Well, Jeff, you got anything? Nope, I'm all set. Good to see you. Scott? I'm good. Okay, Sherry, thank you very much. Uh, You're welcome. Time. All right. I'll get thank back you. to you next time and uh, have some yeah. of those reports that you asked for. Check yeah. register is, is really helpful because uh, mm -hmm. that at least gives us an understanding of transactions and it allows us to ask questions like I asked of Eric when I went over it. Mm -hmm. So I think that yeah, that, that will be forthcoming time. tomorrow, uh, October's. All right. Uh, yeah. I will have that for you. All right. And uh, next month, if you could sit there and, and get that in for the package, that would be helpful. So um, November so transactions. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just produce it uh, for the 30th of November. Give it to Amanda and or email it to us before the meeting. And then we can ask questions of Eric during the meeting. So. Well, Eric, we'll have to talk about this because I don't, I don't think we feel comfortable about sending it through the packet. Fine. Don't send it through the packet. Send it by email. And that's what I'm going to do tomorrow to, to everybody. Okay. All right. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. All right. Number five, boards and commission presentations. Eric, do we have anything for today? Uh, sure. Apparently under item A, the Memorial Day Committee. Uh, John McCall has asked for some help trying to solicit additional members for the Memorial Day Committee. Um, so I think we need to kind of put our heads together and figure out who we can Shanghai into doing that. That would likely be a good, you know, good person. I personally nominate Paula. Um, so that's my nomination. Um, I don't know. I, I nominate Paula. She's got enough to do. Paula's got enough to do. Exactly. Damn. Okay. So, um, I will. I will help. I will help get the word out. And is that what you're asking for, or you want you're looking for actual committee members? Uh, I like both, both to get the word out and for actual committee members. Um, I was being somewhat facetious, volunteering you. By the way, <laughs> I wasn't actually expecting you to say yeah, yes. That's usually Adrian's job. So. Oh. Wow. So, so, um, so we'll sit there and, and we'll work on that. Um, we, we also, so that was it for board presentations, but under appointments, we have the Memorial Day Committee. I'm assuming there's no appointments to that committee? No, there are no appointments to that committee at this point. Um, under item B, so the, you probably all saw the letter in the packet from Diane Grenier asking that you appoint two uh, alternate members, or allow them to appoint two alternate members. Because it's mid season per se, the committees are allowed to nominate um, and appoint their own replacements. Yeah, I, I think we all read the thing. I don't think anybody's in any objection to it at all. I mean, we get that they would love a couple of 
you know, um, back up members and they had some good candidates. So yeah, why not we do it? Yes. Okay. Please so do. just stop before you do that. The charter has a little something to say about that. I sent you off a explanation for that with the uh, um, with the motions, with my packet of motions. Oh, so, so it wasn't in the packet, it was in the motions. Got well, it. the letter was in the packet. Yeah, but the, the explanation was in the motions because the explanation came from Dennis. Basically, it's a charter issue. Only the town meeting in general can add alternate members to a committee. However, the town's attorney wrote us a legal opinion basically saying that because of the committee we're talking about, um, you know, in it not having major public implications, the Board of Selectmen could do a minor ordinance. And I sent you all the text for the minor ordinance also, if you so desired, um, with the understanding that the next time the town holds a special meeting, it would have to be either upheld or denied at a town meeting. But for the intermediate time, you could uh, you could do it if you so chose at this point. And that would be legally. And I, make, I make a motion that we pass the minor ordinance adding two alternate positions to the Norton Fund Commission. Term to be two years run consecutive concurrently with regular members. No. I'll second that. I'm I'm making the motion as it is written. I'm, I mean, there's nothing that we're talking about here for terms or anything else. That's that's how it was written. Six okay. six B. Two, two years. Got it. Four. <laughs> okay. Just just the 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 whatever the the motion, the motion as passed the ordinance as written. As written by the town's attorney. Seconded. Sure. Seconded. Seconded. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed? None. All right. So the Norton Commission can appoint two uh, alternate members. Okay. A building and land use department administrative assistant. Sure. Um, I would. So I have extended a job offer to Lynn Warner, and she is accepted. Um, she's an Andover resident that lives on Gilead as the building department administrative assistant for 20 hours a week. She she interviewed really well. I look forward to accepting that. So I would I would uh, 6C a motion to appoint Lynn Werner of Joliet Road and Andover as the building department administrative assistant for 20 hours per week. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, uh, D, assistant town clerk. So obviously with the town clerk out, there has not been any further progress on the hiring of an assistant town clerk. Okay. Um, and now uh, item seven, go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. Eric have, you, have you taken a chance to reach out um, to the prospective people and let them know that she's out with COVID or, and that just so they're aware they're not, we're not ignoring the situation. Yeah, I have not. Um, I actually, one of the things I wanted to do is reach out to Carol and ask what her plan is for dealing with that. Well, um, she's going to address it when she comes back, but she wants to do an in-person testing. I so, understand, but you have to remember that Carol often does not tell me what she's doing, and she very well may have already done that. She has um, not. Okay. She has not. So, okay. In, in any case, we need to maybe just talk to Carol, but let's not. We probably should have already reached out to him given the circumstances. So, sure. Okay. Uh, item seven, resignations. Mickey Quagliano, the CERT director. So let me just finish writing something down. I did not see the resignation there, but I'm assuming she handed that to you, Eric. Yeah, she resigned uh, the email. She and I have talked about it a couple of times. 
Um, I conned her, not conned her. I recruited her a couple of years ago, um, just before COVID really hit. And she agreed to do it as a very temporary position. Um, and she finally said, you know what, uh, temporary is now. Um, she did give me another name from one of the CERT team members that would be willing to do that. I am going to reach out to that person um, and have a conversation with them. Um, I have not done that yet. So um, at the moment, we don't have a, a emergency management director or emergency management coordinator, I think, technically. Okay, so if we can sit there and, and we're all aware that we need a CERT director, so if anybody finds anybody, please refer them to Eric. Okay. Well, it's I, actually not a CERT director per se. Um, what is, if she's resigning as a CERT director, what are we filling? Mickey is resigning, but she's not resigning as the CERT director. She's resigning as the town's emergency management coordinator. She's still remaining a member of CERT. She was well, never the director of CERT anyway. Mr. Um, McGuire is saying that because that he's just reading off of the agenda. So I'm not right. that smart. Yes, you are correct. So, not that you're not that smart. But so not what it, so. So she's resigning. What do we actually do? We need to find someone as the emergency management coordinator. Yes. Yes. Okay. And what about the CERT director? It was just a misprint on our agenda. Yes, that was okay. a misprint on the agenda. Okay. Did you um? Did you reach out to to Tom uh, from Boston Hill Road? I think he subbed in for a little bit there. I have not reached out to him again. I haven't talked to him in a couple of years. Okay. I talked to him briefly a couple of years ago. Beginning of COVID, right? Yeah. Okay. It might be worth reaching out, you know. I mean, he certainly has the skill set. And um, I, I can give him a call as well if you want. He's a neighbor, so. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to item eight, the town administrator's report. Eric? Okay, so I'm just going to go over a few things. So part of the report is incorrect. Um, for whatever reason, we put the wrong version of it in the packet. Um, that's on me. Um, Couple things. Obviously, the COVID update is slightly incorrect. We do have one known case in the town hall. Um, what, five in the town hall? Not that I know of. No, I killed a mosquito. I had blood on my hand. I was just oh, okay. To Murray. Got it. Okay. I was yeah, like, freaking me out here. That's going to make a I'm like, if vote. you know five employees that have COVID, you know, how come <laughs> I don't know? Okay. Um, so the Will William Bell is working out really well as a custodian. He's been out painting the gazebo. Um, the gazebo is coming along nicely. Um, the building's cleaner than you know. I think any of us are used to expecting it. Um, and as far as I know, the library is fairly happy with that. Uh, also, um, assessor's office. You guys all saw the information from. Uh, the resident who was unhappy with her, her vehicle uh, assessment. If you'd like to discuss that, I suggest we do that in executive session, um, not in, in open session. Uh, in terms of my office, I'm planning on being on vacation December 1 through 6, and I'll probably be out in Minnesota racing ice boats. Um, so keep that in mind. Do you have life insurance? No. Can we put Why life insurance care? on you? I'm single. I don't care but, whether I die. But we can cover you when you're gone. I got plenty of assets. You know. I, you keep so telling us how dangerous know. it is. That's all. Yeah. Um, so Eric, Eric, stay safe. Let's go. Yeah. I will try to stay safe. So public works, you saw the note we added to the packet regarding the revised load ratings for the bridge. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit. 
Um, the thing I would note is the their only concern with load ratings was possible emergency vehicles like our tanker. Um, the other thing I would note is that the new federal uh, transportation bill got passed. Um, there was a line in the news from Connecticut that there would be up to a billion dollars in culvert grants to remove, replace, or restore culverts and address the flow of water under roads, bridges, and trails. So that's something we want to be keeping an eye on um, because it looks like that might be a considerable funding source going forward. Uh, looks like sometime after Thanksgiving, we'll have the initial design meeting with Close Jensen and Miller, where they're going to present the, the bridge design info um, prior to it going officially before the, the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Um, the surveyors are out surveying. They've been out surveying a couple days, uh, topoing in front of the uh, the whole area in town hall for the proposed community center location. Um, construction is beginning on the connectivity grant. Those of you who've gone by on the rail trail have seen the sign is up. They are working on the concrete, the flatwork, so the sidewalks. Um, not the pavers, not the stuff directly in front of the library um, and trying to get that in before the end of construction season uh, to be taken up again as soon as it warms up again. Um, so in terms of the town hall projects, I'm not getting really all that far with the oil storage tank. I asked a couple other contractors because I really have not ever gotten a response from m, &M Oil. Um, so what I did was I went over very carefully the HVAC system uh, with my tech. Um, and, you know, we kind of looked at it room by room, did heat calcs on the building, um, you know, and then, you know, we did a bunch of maintenance on the system, which hadn't been done, you know, in a lot of times, a lot of the air separators were completely frozen up. Um, and so we were airbound on some of the registers. So we basically drained everything and cleaned everything. And it seems like the heat distribution in the building is at least better. Um, one of the problems we discovered was one of the thermostats happens to be right behind, beside the fan exhaust for the building security cameras. So it was running about six or seven degrees warmer than uh, the thermostat, which is why that room was never coming on. So I think we've got a partial solution, maybe not a permanent solution. I'm still working on the other portions of that. Um, you know, I did get a quote from MG, uh, from Martin to do the masonry, um, which was fairly reasonable. So I've got to fill in the other portions of that quote you know, to be able to get it in one big, you know, pile. Um, I also met with one of the VoIP uh, potential suppliers called IP Genie. They're the Krog vendor. They're also the one in the, uh, um, they've got the contract in Hebron, Ram, um, and I think Marlboro. So um, hopefully I'll have a quote back from them by, by next week. Now, is that um, our second or our third quote on that? That would be our third. We have one more. Um, so I think after that, we really need to sit down and pick a contract and go with it. Absolutely. It's, it's considerably cheaper than what we're paying now for the landlines. So there's no, no rational reason not to do it. And our current, our service, you know, kind of sucks currently. Um, and then by taking all that off, that also frees up that panel space for a new sub. So I'm trying to get that done fairly quickly. Um, I would like to say that the, the cost for going to VoIP is going to be very minimal. The other costs associated with that are low enough. I actually think we probably shouldn't apply for low SIP funds for this. And I think we should just eat this out of the building maintenance fund and save low SIP for culverts, because I suspect that's what we're going to need the next biggest chunk of cash for. Um, but I wanted to run that by you 
I mean, we can apply for low SIP funds for it. It's just a question of what kind of what your priorities are. Well, um, I mean, theoretically, that that swap out should pay for itself within a year, I would think. What for VoIP? Yeah. Yeah, VoIP's almost yeah. The hardware costs for VoIP are are fairly minimal. That's not a that's not an issue. I mean, so in 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 it may actually it, depending upon what the numbers come out, it could pay for itself in the remaining budget cycle. So that that probably is a smart decision. Yes, I was just talking about low SIP overall for because you had asked me to wrap up everything for the town building stuff which was the masonry stuff, VoIP, replacing sure. the oil storage tank um, and the HVAC and electrical. And what I'm saying is we're gonna bring that cost in reasonably enough that I think we probably ought to do it out of the existing building maintenance fund as opposed to going for low that's, that's my only, I but I also don't have hard numbers yet, so. I tend to I tend to believe when you get the numbers, it's going to pay for itself, maybe in the remaining budget cycle. So that seems to make sense. The electrical and the other stuff's a different conversation. But. Right. And for the record, we did run out of oil again last week on election day, which was a bit embarrassing. Um, mm -hmm. At the same time, fortunately, uh, when they came out and did the HVAC work, um, somebody also flushed enough paper towels down the so they plugged up the exhaust for or the exit into the tank with paper towels. So I had my tech clear that at the same time. Can we uh, remove the paper towels from there and go to a paper towelless system? Because this is not the first time this has happened. Right. Why is there paper towels down there? Because Scott, you can't fix stupid. Um, well, if, let's not go there. If there is a solution that doesn't include paper towels, can we do that? Hand dryers. <laughs> Something. Something. Uh, okay. We Eric, please look into hand dryers. Well, okay. let's look into something. It may not be hand dryers because that may be cost prohibitive given the electrical requirements, but there's got to be something else. We could go to porta potties. That'll fix them. <laughs> yeah, that'll be great okay. for morale. Eric, what else you got? Uh Let's see. Da, 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 da. That's pretty much it, unless you guys have specific questions for me. Most of the stuff is covered elsewhere in, in other reports. Now, we'll ask you about the uh, time storm or the bridge at the other section. So, okay, let's, let's okay. move on. Old, old business uh, 9A uh, Bunker Hill Road uh, bridge closure. Wait, back up. Wasn't cart on the list? No, it's the cart that? thing going, Eric. Yeah. So I had asked the board a couple times via email whether you guys were interested in uh, replacing the shed roof area. Did so you get right a... now, cart is being run inside the building, whereas before it was in a fenced in enclosure with a roof on it. I asked uh, Mr. Reagan to give me a quote for what it would cost to build it back correctly. Um, and that includes repairing some of the damage because the one that was there previously wasn't flashed and it basically rotted out the siding of the building it was attached to. So to fix the siding, um, pour new footings and rebuild a shed wall that meets current building codes um, and encloses that fenced in area. It's about $5,000. Um, you know, and I just need your approval if you if you're interested in doing that. That was one of the items Jeff Murray had put on the list. Um, you know, the town admin project list for me to review. Jeff, is there any downside to running it, or Eric, is there any downside to running it in the building the way we are now? Uh, there's not a lot of room with tires. Um, you know, it's kind of a crowded spot in there with both things going on at once. When you Maybe. say running it in the building, you're you're you mean they're sorting in that open space? Yeah, they're sorting inside that existing shed. Um, it's basically a three-sided shed uh, that the tires um, and a few other things are stored in. in can we yeah. put, can we can we put them in the blue building? 
The one we just put the door on? I mean, you could theoretically, if you don't want to use the blue building for something else. I mean, whatever you want to, sure, that space is available. That seemed reasonable to everyone? No, no. Maybe we need a site walk. You want to look at it first? Yeah, I think that before we make a decision, we need to get some of us down there and look at it. Okay. Maybe it's not a good situation as it is. Saturday? Sure. What time? What time? Eric, can you do Saturday? Mm, possibly. What time? What do you want to do it, Eric? You're... I mean, I, I'm not sure what it is you want to. Scott, would like everything's to there. Scott. Scott. Maybe it's not. Scott maybe it's not. It. Maybe the whole setup's not right. Maybe it's wrong. Okay, Scott, here's my. Scott, here's what my... time do you want to do it? No, no. Let Paul say something. She's been involved in this more than we have, obviously. So, you did it with Boy Scouts, right? I right. So I've I've done cart, so I'm I can visualize how how it's gonna work. So I'm just trying to understand we're, we're fixing the cage that where people drop their stuff off. Is that we're we're fixing? Because Correct. when they okay, because when they're doing cart, obviously if it rains or if it's snowing, they wanna overhang to sort. So you're saying the overhang where the tires are, it's getting cramped in there because the tires are taking up space, right? Right, because that area is also the tile re tire recycling area. So before you had a caged area where everything could get put in, um, you know, that was a Boy Scout project at one time. The problem is the roof kept blowing off. Um, and the last time it blew off, it kind of got crushed. So it got thrown in the dumpster um, and there wasn't anything. They just kind of half baked built it into the existing fence. So the question is, if you're going to redo it, you need to do it so that it's structurally suitable and it's gonna last for some period of time. Right, so right now when, when people drop off their bottles, they're, drop, they're not putting it in the cage, they're putting it where the tires are Correct. So that's why it's tight in there because you have tires, you have all the stuff for cart, and then they need a spot to sort. Am I understanding that? Correct. Okay. Correct. So our option is either we fix the cage correctly, which Kevin Regan gave us the, the quote, so that we they have space and that underhang so that they can put the, when people drop things off, they put it back in the cage, or we look for a new area. Right, so those are our two options. Correct. This, so the blue build, this blue building, what it, what is it? I'm trying to visualize it's where the it is. really big, the really big one to the right of that that we just put oh. the new garage door on. That would be a really great space because then they can bring their, exactly. their trash. The and thing, the, the thing I'm yeah, concerned there's, about there's, about that solution there's, is there's a right. huge bee problem in there. And all we need to do is put a bunch of sugary cans in there and it's just going to make the problem worse. So that's just a suggestion that there is a lot of wasps and hornet's nests in that building. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't a great, it wasn't a great situation to be, begin with when mm -hmm. we were doing cart and it was outside because the bees are going to come in the, whether they're in the building or not. So, so, you are, I, so you're already dealing with, dealing with them on the other side. When it was in the cage, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're you're pulling out stuff that you know yeah. you're sorting with sugary drinks. So, but These how being kept outside? No, so that's how? why they're outside. That's if they keep that's them inside. It's, outside. Just gonna, it's gonna be a lot of them. I mean, even when we were in there, when we did the renovation for the phase converter, I mean, they were all they were all over the place in there. Yeah. So the other question is. What are your long-term plans for, because I know the board had said initially prior to us putting the door on in the slab there, that you were going to consider at some point a give and take or some sort of recycling center there. Is that still something that you are considering or you're not considering? Because that would make a difference as to what you did with that space. 
I mean, I guess my my take on it was we're not currently doing that, although we have talked about it in the future. Um, and I, it seemed to me like that would be a perfect space to get them out of the weather if it's poop, you know, crappy weather out or whatever. And it gives them plenty of room to work. I, I guess I figured the bees are going to fall no matter where they go, but you know, maybe I'm misunderstanding that. Um, the tires, can the tires go on that other building? <clears throat> what Just the to block off. In the blue the building, blue. can they go in the blue building? I think is what she's asking. As, as soon as you put the something in there, Paul, you're going to lose that building. It's a, it's a good space right now. If we ever like, if we get a backhoe, we're going to leave it up there. If we ever get a backhoe, let's say, okay, we could park it in that building. That's what all other towns do. They have their own backhoe at the transfer station, so they can pack the things, so they don't have to keep driving the machinery up there. Well, is that what we were planning on using that building well, for? Because right now we're not, we're not using it. I guess, not, yeah, I mean, down the road, we can change it. I, I don't right. think this is a, this doesn't have to be permanent, but it's a quick solution for now. Mm. Well, I thought we were discussing this because we're trying to figure out if we're going to spend the money on fixing the, the roof. So if we exactly. put part in that building, then, exactly. then we're not fixing the roof. So we got to decide, are we spending the money on fixing the roof? Or are we going to move cart somewhere else? Am I no, wrong? No, you're hundred percent right. So Scott, what time on Saturday? What time can you make it? Uh, I'm I'm traveling back Friday night late. Whatever time you want, Scott, I'll make it on your time. Are we all going? Well, as many of us that can make it. it who wants? Who, let's, let's start with this. Who wants to go and do a site walk? I'd like to go, but I can't go Saturday. I'm probably going to be working. I mean, gotcha. Jeff Murray knows that place. He knows it. You know. Yeah, I'd like to go when Jeff is going. I don't mean yeah. to be. Maybe not this weekend. Then maybe when Jeff and Paula can both, when we all can go at ten or eleven o'clock in the morning. Schedule it up. Ten o'clock next week would work for me. Right. I, I can't do it next weekend. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I'm gone well, the whole weekend. So. Well, the, the weekend after. Maybe we can email. Can we email and figure it out? Let's, yeah. let's look at our schedules and we can figure it out from email. All right, we'll do that. Okay. Sorry, so Eric, was, it wasn't a quick answer. Sorry. And my reason for putting that on the thing, uh, the list to, to begin with, is either we're going to fix it or we had to fix the signs. The signs at the transfer station said put the cans in the fenced area. So I was either right. we take the signs down or we fix it just so because people were still putting cans in the fenced in area because it said to put them there. Yeah, right. um, no, I, I know. And, yeah. and that's why, you know, I mean, I think it's appropriate to race, replace the shed roof if you're going to use that space. It's not really usable now. It would be usable again with the roof on it. But if you want to consider other buildings, consider other buildings. Or uh, get right Eric, can you send out the scope of work that you had, Kevin, give you a number on, please? Sure. Okay, old business, discuss, discuss and act upon the following, 9A Bunker Hill Road Bridge Closure. So, so you all saw the engineering uh, guidance from the state of Connecticut. Okay. So, so there... They're telling us, or your motion was to allow two-way traffic to, or one-way traffic for all vehicle lanes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It says right in there, there was, wasn't any restrictions before. There's not any restrictions now, except for well, two, two EV and three EV. Yeah. So three EV is basically our water tanker, essentially. Um, it's the only thing that has you know, essentially uh, axle loading high enough to be over the limit. Um, and Kathy Palazzi had a really good point that Mark or Mike Palazzi, who's the director of CART, is on this meeting. If you wanted to ask his input, uh, you could certainly go back one item and do that if you so choose. Why don't we loop, why don't we loop him into the, into the site walk? <laughs> Rather than going back, because we're still not going to make a decision tonight anyway. So let's have him give us our input in person. That might be more appropriate. How do I do it? Mike, 
just because it would be nice. What what is your take on that roof? Did that um, that roof out there, that that uh, chain link uh, fenced area, really isn't big enough as it is. We've always had trouble with that. People just end up throwing the stuff in there, and it makes a damn mess. You can't put enough barrels in there, and the, and these guys' aim is terrible like that. So. Then the, then the car people have to go in there, especially in the summertime, and get stung and everything else in there. So it's it, it's really good where they have some uh, undercarriage work. They can work out of the rain and the weather. Because uh, the, the building itself that houses the supplies for that is too small to work in. Way too small. Okay. But we need to, the ideal thing would be find another place for the tires. Right, exactly. That's why we should have talked to Mike first. You know what? Could we put a Connex box in there for the tires in the at the town at the transfer station? Just use a Connex box for tires, and then we just turn that area into cart. And that'll leave your your place open for a backhoe if you ever get one. That's where we had the old one. I mean, the tires don't care where they are. If they go into Connex, we just open the the doors for. And don't we have one down at the uh, ball fields that we could use even? No, they, they took it for softballs. Okay. Or, yeah. I'm just saying it's a, what is it, a couple thousand dollars for a Connex box? Uh, yeah, more than that right now. Just a small one? Yeah. So, yeah. Small ones are running I somewhere. Uh, I can't probably hundred. make it this Saturday because I'm still getting over COVID. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm going to take a test on Sunday. And I should be clean, so I can go any time after that. Well, Mike, you look good and you sound good, and we're glad you're getting over it. Yeah. And when we have our meeting, Mike, we'll make sure that you are invited. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. All right. Thank you. Okay, and just remember, you're going to have to get me whenever you guys decide to meet. You're going to have because it will have to be officially noticed because there'll probably be more than three of you there. So it will be noticed as a board of selectmen meeting in site park. We'll let you know. All right, old business. Back to uh, Bunker Hill Road Bridge. What are we going to do? Are we making a motion to expand the uh, the opening of that bridge? What's the board's appetite for it? I'm fine with one lane in both directions with no weight restriction if other people are. I, I still want to leave it as one lane right now. Okay, Scott? Uh, I, I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay, so I would uh, motion authorize Public Works to open Bunker Hill Bridge to all traffic with no weight restrictions. It will remain a one lane bridge open to traffic in both directions. I'll second that. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Okay. Um, 9B, the RAM multi use turf field project. Uh, I'm assuming Eric gets on here to uh, say that it was soundly defeated in all three towns. Okay. All right. It failed. It failed. All right. Uh, 9C, Veterans Monument Park Upgrades, Flagpoles, Battle Cross, and Irrigation System. Where are we at with those items? Okay. So the irrigation system is in. Um, the water system and the plumbing portion is tied in and done. The low voltage lighting is done, and all the electrical is done. We're disconnected from the transformer, the unmetered connection, and we are connected and running through the Andover uh, Museum at this point. Um, so for the stuff that the town had agreed to pay for, we pretty much completed everything that the town had agreed to. The only area that's of contention is Jerry asked whether the town would be willing to pay for the cost of the low voltage lighting that was installed and was moved around, um, which the total bill for that is 
2,180, something like that dollars. Um, and I told Jerry that because the board of selectmen hadn't authorized that, I didn't feel like um, I should really exceed the scope of that project, that it should be a board's decision whether you wanted to fund that or leave that to Jerry to fund. Do we have any and, idea? Uh, it looks like 2118 is what it was, right, Eric? Correct. I mean, we did give a scope of work. I'm not sure how we ended up outside of that. And did we get competing bids on that? Or was that just something that was done as part of the project? Well, that was done as part of the project. I mean, part of what happened is we had an agreement at the last minute for what would have been the most expensive item, which was the installation of the topsoil and seeding um, and over landscaping and another contractor agreed to do that, you know, essentially for free. Um, so we worked everything else around that. So, you know, I didn't really have anything to do with uh, the low voltage lighting. That was what Jerry had wanted to put in. Do we have the money anywhere? We're, we're already running tight. That's the problem. We're already, we're running into air, other areas where we're, we're gonna be tight. So that was my conversation with, that's why I was asking Jerry where we're at because we have some other issues. I mean, I don't know where, where Jerry is on the funding for the other, the Battlefield Cross and any of, of the rest of that, because um, that was not part of the scope of anything I did. So um, I, I can give a quick update. I talked I talked to Jerry yesterday or the day before. So the, uh, what was the question? Okay, so the flagpoles, are, are ready to go. Those are covered. He, he has enough money for those. As far as I remember from our conversation, the battlefield cross, and then um, he had another monument. I guess the bases are in, but he's waiting to order the actual top pieces because he has to, he has to raise some more money. Things got doubled in price and it was hard for him to to get these where he wanted to with his original price. So those are on hold right now. Right, you can't get them anyways. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just, I feel like we gave a scope of work and we need to stick within the scope of work. That's my own take on it. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not a slight on anyone or anything. Certainly not on the vets being in one of them. I just feel like as a town, you know, we, we've allowed a citizen to put all of his energy and effort into this. And we've, I feel like we've been really supportive of this, but um, it can't be something where we just let them step outside of that, you know? So just so I understand the light, it, the lighting we're talking about that he, he's asking us to cover, is it, has it been put in or? It's yep, it's, it's operating as of, oh, I saw it when we, yeah. over over the weekend so yeah yeah because the lighting had to be in before you put the topsoil in yeah all right. all right so this is something that happened several weeks ago before the before the grass was even planted so what happens do we know um this is obviously a question for jerry but eric if if we don't agree to pay for this he's gonna does he have the funding somewhere or we don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, he's we had to pay the cut. He, he's trying to check his books right now. Carol's out, so he can't see. He doesn't know exactly how much money he has. But I think well, I think this. I think the point would be that it might put him further behind on the other monuments that he wants to add down there. Would be my best guess. You know, and Eric, you know, Eric, do we have money from some other things that have been? Uh, Manipulated. So I gave you guys a breakdown, um, you know, of where we are with funding for that. Um, so bear with me for a sec. This is a little convoluted. What, what so, page was what page was that in the in the packet? So we can all jump there. 
Uh, oh, just sh share your screen, Eric. All right, let me track it down here. Can I share screen, Amanda? I think it's, uh, it looks like it's page 28 of 80 on the packet, 28. Okay, so, um, so, so I'll, I'll give you the rundown because this is kind of convoluted. Um, initially, you authorized the use of all the excess COVID relief money, which was about $24,000 um, in the second allot. So the way it worked is the state required us to put that money towards public safety. So we credited that money to the resident state troopers account because that was the biggest public safety line we had. And then we transferred all the excess money after we paid that bill back out of that fund into the building maintenance fund. So um, the total of that that we transferred back out of the resident troopers account was, was just over $44,000 because a resident trooper himself came in under budget about $20,000. I was not anticipating we were going to to transfer in the whole $44,000. That was a miscommunication between myself and Sherry, but having put it in the building maintenance fund, I thought that was a fine place because we certainly got plenty of building maintenance stuff to do with it. Um, so as far as the monument expenses, you know, that this is the stuff we've actually spent for at this point. Um, so we're over the $24,000 allotment, but that includes the electrical work, the low voltage lighting by one. If we take that out, we're pretty much, you know, we're just over the $24,000 in the account. Um, so that's where we are in terms of that whole project. And you could explain to everybody in the board about uh, Lenco Electrical and how much money they donated also. So Lenco comped us about half the total bill for the electrical work. Um, he basically charged us, uh, you know, no markup on parts. And then, you know, he, yeah, very little on labor. So. I don't know whether I sent you guys the full bill. The total bill for, for Lenco was about 21,000 something, um, but he comped us about 11,000 out of the work. So, And so that 21,000 was what? That's the new, a new service up there? Yeah. That was everything related to the electrical work there. Okay. So... And one of the things that's really difficult is we're connecting to a building built in the you know, 1800s and that we're trying not to affect the aesthetics of the building as much you know, as we absolutely had to. So um, I don't know if you've ever seen the access into the basement, but basically what they do is they remove one of the heating ducts. They push the duct out and they climb through the duct opening to get into the basement. Um, and I can tell you, I'm sure as hell not going into the basement in that. I don't think I would fit. Um, it's just a, it's just an enormous amount of labor. You know, when I was out there and they, they were working on that thing, you know, uh, for a hell of a long time. Uh, my take on this is that everyone that's involved really did a lot of extra. And I don't believe that $2,118 is a lot to ask 
and you can get a lot of goodwill for just paying it and not and be done with it. Uh, again, I my only concern is that are we setting a precedent uh, on these types of things? You know, Adrian. I mean, Adrian, the project is complete. It's uh, it's finalized. Well, it, it's I'm not. Gonna, let's Scott make the motion to approve it. Let's go. There you go. I make I make a motion to approve the twenty one hundred and eighteen dollars for the low voltage lighting to Ron's professional lawn care. Okay, I'll second that. Further discussion. Where was the motion that Eric had just for just for fun to look at? No, I'm missing it. Ten D ten D. Ten D. Okay. So further discussion? No. No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those Aye. opposed? All those opposed? All those abstain? Okay, Adrian, where is Jeff Murray and did he vote? Because I can't see him. Yes, he voted. He voted for it? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. So 401. All right, let's move on to 10 new business to discuss and act upon. Uh, 10A, townwide Christmas caroling. Paula, what do you got for us? Okay. So there is um, there's a rec commission meeting tomorrow night. Adrian and I are going to go and, and talk to them. I've, I've talked to Carol about this and we kind of have our ducks in a row now and um, we're going to have, we're going to talk to the rec commission tomorrow night and see if we're going to be updating anything. So we have our date. We're talking about Saturday, December 18th. We've contacted some organizations to come join us. And um, we're gonna talk to the Rec Commission about doing some uh, hot cocoa and treats and things like that. We're, we're gonna start promoting this to the public probably next week, just as a save the date. And we've contacted CERT and the firehouse. So everybody's been very supportive and positive about it. Now we just have to get our our details in and yeah, there's there's a bit of concern that from cert that the weekend that we picked is too close to christmas so we're still trying to figure out if we need to change that their concern is that they won't get people to cover um the safety side of it so um we'll right, have to sort of figure I think that out. Once, once we once we talk to them and have a meeting with them and give yeah. them the details then we'll know better but they they did say that they weren't sure about people's schedules, but we're gonna have a meeting with CERT in the firehouse and get that get those details figured out. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, 10B personnel, building and last land use department and the assistant town clerk position, Eric. I think we've already discussed these. We don't okay. need to discuss them again. Let's go, okay. Uh, 10C, policy on snowplow damage and mailbox replacement. That was in your packet. That was a slight revision of the uh, policy that you approved a couple of years ago. Um, not a significant revision. So why are we revising it? Uh, Jay wanted to add a couple of things that he felt was appropriate. Can you highlight them for the public, please? Uh, that's everything that's in bold. And since we're up, if we agree to update this, are we sending out information saying check out our website and read this for updates? Or how are we how are we letting them know that there, there are potential updates? Um, I just already, we already publicized this, frankly. Um, I was just giving this to you since it was already largely approved by you. Um, I didn't think you guys really needed to formally approve this again. Um, 
you know, but we can certainly uh, do so. I would say wait. I would say my suggestion, let's wait until it's snow time because this is going to come up as a conversation. Bingo. So we'll put a post out there and, and or email whatever we think is appropriate. So first snowfall, you know, you know you're going to get phone calls. Well, we, we will repost it then. There's no question. But the fact of the matter is, if you wait until the first snowfall, the ground is hard. And if your mailbox is not where it should be, um, then it's already too late. And the point is, is that there's a very specific spot relative to the road that the mailbox should be in. Um, and that's because you shouldn't be able to hit a mailbox with a plow if you're plowing all the way to the curb. So that's really what, you know, if you wait till then, I'm actually asking public works to have all the plow drivers go their routes and put uh, tape to everybody's mailbox one of these alerts if it's a mailbox that doesn't meet, it's either too far back or too close to the road. You know, because there's a bunch of mailboxes that legitimately are likely to get hit during normal plowing operations if we're plowing all the way to the curb. So are we going to have those guys sign off that they've done that, that tag their whole route? So I talked to Jay about that. We haven't come up with a formal plan to do that, but I do want to come up with a list of everybody whose mailboxes I don't intend to replace if they get hit. Well, I mean, candidly, you've just told us that there's a bunch of them. Then let's get a plan in place and do it. Let's not dilly dally. You just said it has to happen before the gets any ground gets any colder. So let's do it. You know, has Mr. Murray's box been tagged? Not yeah. yet. It's definitely in the wrong spot. I've seen his. It's way too close to the curb. <laughs> no, it is not. It's actually, no, it, to be honest with you, I'm on a sweeping curve and the plow always tends to drift wide. Every time I put the little reflective sweeping, things up. Sweeping put, curve. That sounds I put like the reflective button. things up, marking the curve. We don't have a problem. It's just we had early snowfall when my guy hit. And it's very, it, in, in the public works defense, it's very hard to find the edge of the roadway on my street. Well, they can. They just listen till they hear your. Once they hit your box, they know where it is. I got a brand new one this year. It's it's right for uh, it's right for picking. I filled mine with concrete, put the pole ten feet in the ground. I'm dying to let the state hit mine. I've actually moved mine up back. I moved it back four inches from the edge, so it's back farther than it was in previous years. So. Oh, so it might have been closer than when it got hit. It was at the edge of the curbing before. It was at the edge Must of the. Must be eight inches back, Jeff. Also, he's four inches too close. Better tag it, Eric, just in case. Okay, so so much for fun. So, Eric, you're going to sit there and have Public Works do that and uh, uh, publicize it now. I mean, does anyone here have a problem with the the, the information? No. no, it's good information. Publicize. No, I just want to make sure we have the information. We're talking about doing it. Let's follow up on it. You know. Yeah. Okay, so now we're moving on to. Uh, 10D Veterans Memorial Field Funding uh, Agreement and the Rich Calarco uh, Field Maintenance Proposal. Eric? All this agreement is, is it's, it's changing how we are actually paying Rich Calarco. Used to be, we used to pay Hebron directly and now we're gonna be paying Rich Calarco directly. So that's going to come off the Hebron budgeted amount. Right. Yep. Okay. And Hebron's okay with this? Yeah. yeah it's same. Same. He, he's working for them also, Adrian. No, I'm just, given that we're changing who we're paying, I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. That's all. Yeah. Eric, you look confused. Um. You know, I haven't physically spoken. I personally haven't spoken to Andy or Parks and Recs to see. I know that they are subcontract. The Hebron is subcontracting directly with Clarko again also himself. So it's just a question of whether we subcontract with him directly or we subcontract with him through Hebron who's subcontracting with him. 
I don't think it really makes a whole hell of a lot of difference myself. Well, unless Hebron was taking a percentage. Can you, can you find out from Hebron if they're understanding that their total bill will be reduced by 1600 and some odd dollars? Mm, I don't think it's sixteen and hundred dollars. I think it's that, more like I thought it was. That that was a yearly price. Was it a yearly price? Yeah, I feel oh, like twenty twenty three something. I think. Let, let's just clear the air so that everybody's on the same page, please. Yeah, yeah it's eleven hundred and fifty dollars for the first year. That, that's okay. because it's only a, a short. That's a season. Short season, yeah. And the whole year price was double that. Okay. All we really need to do is do what Jeff McGuire said and uh, call them and talk, make sure you talk to them and if they're on the same page as us. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's move on to the American Red Cross donation bin request, 10E. I saw it in our package. Where is that going to try to be put? I have no idea. Who put it in our package? Uh, it's just a request from the Board of Selectmen for a clothing donation spot. They're, they're asking us like to put it. Okay. So they have no idea where to put one. They're just asking us. Okay. Sure. And what are they proposing to put there? A, a bin or something? Yes. Yeah. It's in the package. It's one of their metal. Don't they already, but don't they already have a bin in town? Not that I know of. I thought there was something over by the post office. I mean, they, they have were just um, hopping on to explain. So the contact reached out. Um, they currently have one at the Shell station. So you've probably probably seen it there. Um, and Shell wants them to move it. Um, so they reached out to see if the town um, has a location for them. Any recommendations, anyone? I mean, I would put it at the dump. That's where we have the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Is there room at the transfer station? We'd fit it in somewhere. The only problem with that, it's going to limit access to when to, to transfer station days. Okay. Is this all, do, do we know, does this compete with the, the Andover collections that the, the pantry does? No. I have no idea. This is, it looks like it's just closed. So. I'm just reading the email. No, I just know in the past they've done clothes as well. You know. Oh, they do their yeah, they do their clothing drive. I think um, twice a year. Okay. So this would you know this would be sitting out there the entire year. Well, why don't we sit there and push this to next meeting and sit there and see if there's an appropriate spot in town, if anyone finds a room from the church, the library, the field, you know, we'll, we can talk if there are reasonable spots and there are probably some and some that we would rather not do them at. So uh, let's, yeah. let's find out if it, if it might work. And then Amanda, one thing, ask them. If we potentially staged it at our transfer station, would two days a week uh, be acceptable? Just to get information, not saying that we need to put it at the transfer station, but we may as well ask. Uh, Eric, 10F, uh, the connectivity grant construction progress. You talked about it before, do we need to talk about it again? No, okay. we're starting in on the sidewalks for that. 11, uh, approval of minute meetings for Tuesday, October 20, uh, October 12th, 2021, special meeting minutes. Everybody read those minutes. We all, we all good? Come on, make a motion. Make a motion to accept the minutes as so written. Second. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, okay, I have nothing. Finance uh, 12, finance department report we went over, uh, 13. Uh, well, does anyone have any questions on D 
the information that's in the package. It looks like we got the final report from last year off of Phoenix, and then we got a report for this year off of the new system. Eric, a question, you know, I didn't ask Sherry, but I'll ask you. Do you, uh, are you getting an accounts payable report? Or are we just cutting checks the day we receive the invoice of the bills as we have in the past? Like I look at this, nothing encumbered. So I'm just wondering, are you getting any payables? Anything? I don't know about an accounts payable report. I mean, I get a giant stack every two weeks you know, and I review them before we cut checks. I review them and sign off on them before we cut checks. Okay. I don't get a report per se. Um, I mean, in Sherry's defense though, she did bring a, she did say that that's something she's working on to get us payables and receivables. I just wondering if he, if he sees them. I know we don't, I just asked the question if Eric saw them. So Eric, you basically see the bills, you get a stack of bills, those bills get input into the system and checks get paid. Sure, okay. right. Okay, um, anybody have anything they wanna talk about with the, the finance department reports? I can jump in while I'm here. So I have, and I don't know if any of you guys want these or if it's an appropriate copy, I print the check registers every time that's what Eric is on the top of Eric's pile. I don't know if including those in like the agenda, the meeting packet is helpful for you guys like each month or? We have asked for those and those, are, those on a monthly basis will be included. I mean, I don't necessarily okay. know we need to see them every week. But right. yes, it's very helpful to understand for the people that aren't at the, the town signing the checks to see what the checks were cut for okay. and to who, and then we can ask the appropriate questions. Yeah, I think Sherry said she's going to send them outside of the yeah. package. Okay. She's going to email them to okay. us outside of the package. Okay, um, so 13 budget. Uh, Eric, are there any appropriation transfers? Not at this point, no. Any, any over expenditure requests? Not at this point. Okay, item 14, tax collector's report. There is a refund request. Um, where did I see? Why I wanted to go over that with everybody, just so everybody understands why I vote no. Um, so it's on page 65 of your packet. There were two pages, though, when I looked at it this morning. No, not that one. Oh, it's in the assessor's report. That's where I saw it. Okay. So of those refunds, um, there were sold ones and then the Board of Assessment Appeals uh, made three adjustments, all for vehicles. Okay. All right. Anyone so, want to make a motion on that one? The one thing I would say before you make a motion is that there's a strong possibility the top one, the one to the Honda Lease Trust, uh, you know, may end up in litigation at some point. So I'm not saying don't approve it as is, but I'm saying if you do approve it, know that that's maybe headed for further court action. From us or from someone else? From somebody else. All right, wait, back up again. You're saying if we approve it as, as it stands? It doesn't matter whether you approve it or not. That doesn't have any bearing on, on any further. What are you trying to tell us? Just tell yeah, us. We're totally lost. So if you want to discuss that, I would say we discuss that in executive session. Well, I mean, we already got an FOI on it. So what's the difference? That's the same one, right? If you want to discuss it, discuss it in executive session. Okay. So does someone want to make a motion to approve these?
Okay. I want to go to executive session now and figure out why we're not talking about it in public, but yeah. we, we can move on. I hate approving tax refunds. Anybody? Anybody? We'll, we'll circle back to it after executive session. Okay. Excited about that. The assessor's report. Anybody have any questions? So, Eric, the, the when is the, for the town and the residents, when is the revaluation for all of the residential properties being posted? So the goal is to have that posted at the beginning of December. Okay. Any other questions or any other issues related to that? All right. So we're going to go on at 16 department or departmental fire department. It's okay, buddy. Fire department report was included. Didn't see anything from the burning official. Troop K residents say true. There was a burning official. The burning official's report is in there. It was, it was out yep. of order. We apologize. Anybody have any questions about any of these? Library, assessors, senior transportation. Thank you, Catherine. A lot of burning on Bunker Hill, all I noticed. There's more than this, or what are you saying to us, Scott? <laughs> Just an observation. Just an observation. Okay. Does it does it jive with the with the burning officials report? I'm going by the official report. Okay. I thought you were saying something over and above. Yeah. No. I mean, no. There's a total of six total permits issued for this fiscal year, 2021. Three yeah. on Bunker Hill. Uh -huh. yeah. Them are on Bunker Hill. Glad to see people cleaning up their property. Awesome. Probably. I'm glad to see it too. Two for the same uh, individuals. So that's good. All right. Okay. Um, assessor's report. And that was it. So that's all that was in the package. So um, and we did get one from the Registrar of Voters. So Senior Transportation Registrar of Voters, thank you for the Registrar of Voters for running a uh, seamless election of a one question ballot on November 2nd. Appreciate it. Correspondence, nothing. Public speak. All right, let's go. Uh, Diane Grenier. No, um, I'm all set. Uh, thank you very much. Always entertaining. As always, Diane. Um, Diane Choquette. I'm all set, thanks. Thank you. Joanne Ebert. Yeah, thank you. All right. And Marina, if you'd like to public speak. No? Okay. I'm good for right now. Excellent. All right. So we now have uh, item 19, executive session to discuss the assistant treasurer's officer's union contract pay and benefits. Um, I got to figure out how to share my no, screen. No, 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 no. We have to vote it. to go in. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm waiting for someone to make a motion. I don't know how this works. That's okay. Make a motion that we go into executive session. Anybody? I'm making a motion to enter executive session per CGS 1-2206A to discuss the assistant finance officer's union contract. I would also like to invite the following numbers. Who do we want to invite? Well, first of all, I will second that. Marina, as an employee, you have the option of having this as a public conversation. Would you rather have it in executive session? Yes, I would rather have it in executive session then I would like to invite uh, Diane Shawkat into that conversation as well as the Board of Finance representative. Would you also like to have Eric Anderson? I would as a, as a, as a line supervisor, please. I'll second that. Okay, well, who's making the motion, Paula or Adrian? I made the motion and I think uh, Adrian seconded. I seconded it and Scott modified it to include Eric. 
Okay. All those in favor? All those opposed? All those that abstain? Okay, let's go. Um, let's move this into executive session. So we appreciate everybody else for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Amanda. We're going to re-enter our regular, we're leaving executive session, going back to our regular scheduled meeting at 9.32 p.m. Um, do we have any uh, open items that need to be cleared up? Um, the I would make a motion that we approve the tax adjustments as noted in the packet. I will second. All right, further discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. We moving on? Okay, so, so that one is four to one. So can I have a request? Because the ones since August are still sitting in the thing waiting to be signed. So you could probably come in and sign like a whole quarter. I'll come, I'll come sign them because the board chose to vote against me. Okay, so, I don't know if you can sign them considering you voted against. It seems, uh, it seems, you know what, yeah, Adrian, if you'd like to sign them, you're more than welcome to. No, uh, I think Paula's going down there for a meeting tomorrow. She can do it. Okay. Eric, uh, Eric, I'll be in to sign them. All Perfect. right. Uh, further. Their election of duty. Okay. Who wants to make the motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Right. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys later. Have a good night, guys. Peace. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Good night.